Hello, thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to discuss a bit about the Duratex roller grade application. Of course, uh, we're going to be using a roller. We'll be using either a 9 inch, uh, we could use a 4 inch, and for these 4 inches, by the way, we sell the refills. It's a 2, uh, two pack for refills. We could even use a little 3 inch roller if we were just doing some touch ups or say a real small cab. And we can use a brush uh, if we needed to get in, in, in crevices or uh, cutouts or, you know, speaker openings. So these are the basic tools that we can use today uh, and that you would use. Uh, we've taken this cab mock-up, done a little bit of repair work. In prior video, you've seen how we do that and that we use the vinyl spackle. Or you can use wall, uh, gypsum wall board uh, uh, mud, drywall mud, if you will. It uh, goes on easy with a putty knife. It's fun stuff to work with because it dries so quick, it dries hard, it sticks well, the Duratex sticks to it, and it sands like a dream. So, before we get started, what we're going to want to do is get some tools together. Uh, we've got our roller, paper towels, of course, we've got our Duratex, and I like to keep a little bucket with some water in it nearby because you might need it. Uh, if you get it on your, your, your hands or something like that, it's easy to get off or if you spill or get it somewhere you don't want it, you can wipe it off. Now if you get it on clothes, forget about it. It's another deal. I've ruined shirts, I've ruined pants and shoes. So if you're going to be doing some Duratex roller or spray, uh, best to use uh, some clothes that you're not going to wear to church Sunday. Okay, let's get started. First what we're going to do is uh, take a roller and well, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and give it a quick sanding just to make sure everything is smooth. And that's about how easy this, uh, this uh, spackle sands off. Just tack rag it off and that's, that's about all there is to it. It sands so nice. And uh, this is a real coarse uh, sanding sponge that I use. Uh, I'm not the very best applicator of Duratex, but this is a great tool. Uh, you'll like it. Give it a try. Okay, so now we have our roller, we have our Duratex, and what we're going to do is we're going to dip the roller in the Duratex. Don't use a, uh, a typical paint roller pan like if you're going to paint your kitchen or bathroom or something. All that does is it exposes a lot of product to the air, which means it's going to dry. You can get chunks and bits and things like that. So. I like just taking, even with the 9 inch roller, I just take and dip the roller in there, load it, and go ahead and, you know, get the product on the cab. A few dips for one this size is about right. So you spread it out a little till you get an idea how much you need. Alright, a little bit more. That should be enough. And then set the lid back on the bucket, and that way it won't dry out. Especially in the winter time, you know, when you're working in a heated basement or something like that, you know, the humidity gets real low and uh, it can dry very quickly, both on the cab and in the bucket, uh, if you don't have a lid on it. Okay, now, all I'm doing is just kind of positioning the Duratex on the cab. It takes a little bit of pressure on the roller just to force it in and get rid of all the, the uh, little voids. You can see them pretty clearly. I mean, if you miss a spot, you'll notice it real quick when you're putting on the Duratex. Right? So I'm just getting it evenly applied and trying not to get my shirt sleeve in it. Lost more shirt sleeves like that. But basically, I'm just watching it to see where is it a little bit heavy, where is it uh, that I could spread it out, and it looks pretty good. Now, Important trick, just like painting in the, in the, on the wall in your house, kind of get the excess Duratex off the edges and the ends so that when we do our finishing, it doesn't uh, leave any, any lines and telltale marks. Okay, that's, uh, it's positioned. It's ready to go. Now we do the finishing. Now, let me say this. This is your first coat. If these speaker boxes are going to be sitting on a shelf in your family room, then one heavy coat is probably just right. If you're going to be doing mobile DJ uh, speakers and things like that where you're transporting, 
I really suggest two coats. Let your first coat be your heavy protective coat and then put another coat on where you can tweak the texture, give a little more build, a little more protection. Uh, Duratex is tough, but we're not putting a lot of product on there and that's one of the beauties of Duratex. You can get a great texture without having to spend a lot of money and without having to put on a huge layer. Okay, now the finishing part is, is really simple. Uh, I was putting a little bit of pressure on the roller, not a lot, but a little bit just to make sure I had a good even finish. Right? Now I want to address the corners because I may have pushed a little excess material out over the edge. So simple enough, put your roller on an angle and very lightly just run it down the edge. Okay, very lightly run it down the edge. Very little pressure and that will take and blend it over onto the side of the cab just a little bit if you notice. Okay, and that way it's, it's uh, you're not leaving any gobs running over. Okay, now, now the easy part and the fun part, I'm going to hold almost no pressure on this roller. All right, I'm going to just hold it with a couple fingers. And all I'm going to do is just allow the roller to roll evenly across the surface under its own weight, all in one direction. Now, be careful when you land that you land straight, not crooked, because that if you land crooked, it can take and push the product a little bit and create a little scuff mark. Very light pressure, finishing off, okay, you can eyeball it. Look at it from a few different angles just to make sure that you've got the consistency you're looking for. Look at your edges. Do you need to run the edges a little bit? Okay. Looks pretty good. All right. That's how easy it is to apply Duratex. Now, a little hint uh, that some guys are using, uh, when you have a cutout for your cab, all right, that will, and you don't have your speaker mounted, typically you're going to mount your speaker after the cab is coated. But you go ahead and paint that face of the cab that's got your cutout in it. All right? You use your brush and you just dab it. You can stipple and create almost a, a, an exact copy of this texture with your paintbrush on the inside, radio, the inside cutout. So you get this side done. Then you can stack up a few buckets or something else that's a similar diameter, just a little smaller. You can tip that cab upside down so that the, the, uh, the buckets or the stand that you make rests on the bottom of the cab, flipped over, and now you can proceed to do the other five sides and you don't have to do, you know, leave one side undone and then come back uh, the next day or something to, to work on it. So just a little, uh, a little trick. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to zoom this in and show you what this texture looks like, give you a good close-up of it. Okay, you notice the texture that we created with the, uh, the roller. This is zoomed in pretty tight, so it's going to be tough to see uh, real clearly. But you get a real pleasant, even, uh, uh, spackly looking uh, texture. And it just uh, it's tough and... Uh, it's beautiful and it's easy to do with the uh, with the roller. Okay, so there you see how easy it is to create a beautiful texture using the Duratex roller grade material and uh, a foam roller, the textured foam roller. Um, the important thing to do now is allow this to dry. Uh, if you're up north in uh, wintertime and cool temperatures, make sure you've got at least 65 degrees of temperature surrounding this. Don't put a fan on it because that just drops the temperature really rapid, uh, rapidly. Uh, it needs a little bit of warmth in order to cure up the best. It's going to take a few days for it to reach its maximum strength, but it's going to dry pretty quickly. Once it's dry, you'll come back and then you can look at it real critically and look for any voids, any thin spots. It's almost impossible not to have some. Uh, and that's why we recommend always two coats, unless you've got a real heavy first coat. This was just a, a, 
this was just a moderate first coat. This was not what I call a heavy first coat that we put on here. And it's going to shrink a little bit when it dries, but you'll still have a beautiful texture. Look for the voids. Put a second coat on. Uh, you're going to use a lot less material on your second coat, and it'll go quick. But um, now all that's left to do is to take the, uh, the paint roller. You can uh, wash these out and use them. I mean, over and over and over again. So, uh, but realize if you do use a four incher, we have refills available. That uh, it's really inexpensive way to uh, to apply the product. The only thing I wanted to notice too is notice I have some cardboard sitting on the table. This is Mama's dining room table, so I didn't want to make a mess. So you guys know that uh, it doesn't smell bad. She won't know when she comes home that you've been working on this stuff in the living room. But uh, better to have a good construction area where you can work on this. Uh, and uh, not risk any spills. Thanks for stopping by. Visit us at acritech.com. That's A-C-R-Y-T-E-C-H.com. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to, to email me. My name is Dan, and it's at sales at acritech.com. I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks.